high school, it was probably like the 11th grade. Hip hop was just wide open. Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg was running the charts. The Taurus B.I.G. was running things. Just had so many elements in hip hop. The South was starting to creep up a little bit with the eventual arrival of Outkast and, and the Dungeon family. So in order to stick out, you had to be nice. Like you couldn't come with just a gimmick and you just blow up. You had to be dope. Being in VA, the, the music was a little bit different. We was getting it, you know, New York is where you would get it from originally. So we was getting it like a few weeks later. So he came down and he had a cassette tape. You know, that's when back in the day, we would just had to pause tapes, um, just recording stuff off the radio. And, you know, he had recorded a, a mix from Hot 97 on one of those stations and Tech Your Neck came on, man. I just was like, Jesus Christ. What the hell is this? You know, it was one of the moments where just the just the whole world stopped. It just felt like everything was going in slow motion, and I just remember just playing the song, having to, to be a pain in the neck, having to rewind it over and over again, and just sitting there listening, like my head damn near on the speaker, just like just figuring out, like and then you know, him, him telling me, you know who was who and everything like that because they was buzzing around that time. They just came out of New York. Wu-Tang's 36 Chambers, I was actually, I swear to God, I was walking out of high school, out of my, out of school was over. There was some other kids from my school who never go to class outside on the corner chilling and they was playing. I'm like, yo, who is that? And they, they was like, Wu-Tang Clan. I'm like, Wu-Tang, what is that? Like, you know, when you first heard the name, you're like, what is Wu-Tang Clan? What are you talking about? He's like, nah, it's these dudes. So then I'm outside listening, I'm like, how many people are on this song? Yo, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, it's a crew of them. I was introduced to Wu Tang through the singles, right? But when I when I got that CD that into the 36 Chambers, like I got the actual CD. I, I think for Christmas I got a CD player, the very first one, and 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 my parents bought me a couple of CDs. They didn't know what they were buying. How I stayed in touch with hip hop was via local radio stations playing rap shows on the weekends. Because this is right around the time that hip hop started getting played on the radio in the daytime, okay? Uh, before then, you wouldn't hear it in the daytime. Um, and by reading the source, and I think Vibe magazine had just come out around that time, Rad Pages was also hot. So we kind of kept our quote unquote ear to the street based on what the magazines were talking about and what the local shows were, were, uh, were playing on the radio station. Well, Summer 93 was just, it was kind of an, it was an interesting year in hip hop. It was a music seminar. And I remember Wu Tang. It was a, it was one of their first shows, and already from the very beginning, I mean, you know, people always say like, "Oh, look at back." Then was it? Yeah, yeah. Always. Nobody never knew. Nobody knows anything. But there are some times when you see somebody special, and you see something special, and you know immediately that it's going to be a movement that has the the potential to change hip hop. But probably my biggest early memory when the record drop was not being a journalist, because um, I actually was and still am a DJ. So we were doing uh, college radio back then, WPRB, a show called The Raw Deal. And we were actually the first people to play Protect Your Neck. Oh, okay. Yeah, because my homeboy G, who was the host of the show, um, like he was down with them from, from Shaolin. So they come to the radio station, you know, just like a hundred deep. They incorporated the whole Kung Fu, the whole, you know what I mean? They slang, they was making their own, they had their own slang. There's nine of them, one of them wasn't showing his face. Got old, dirty as devils, wild, different personalities and energies. So that was crazy. I remember somebody came with um, Protect Your Neck. First time I heard Protect Your Neck was in school in the bathroom. Because we the, the deans would take your Walkmans and radios, but somebody snuck a black radio in the bathroom. We playing dice or we was playing cards and Protect Your Neck was on. He just kept playing it back. I remember everybody saying, what's that? That was like a cypher record on wax because you never really heard anything like that before. It just sounded like nothing else that was out at the time. When we would play that record on the radio or in the club, people would just go nuts. Just a little history lesson for everybody. When they first serviced the record on their own um, Wu-Tang records. The original B-side was Tears. After the laughter comes tears. Then when they got the deal with Loud, then the B-side was Method Man, the M-E-T-H-O-D Man. Honestly, to me, that was a little surprising to me because hearing them together and then next year you know, here's this record with just one of the members solo kind of threw me off a little bit, but at the same time, like when that record dropped, it was like as if 
even though Method Man was the only guy on the record, it still seemed like they was all on the record. Because even in the Method Man video, you seen all of them in the video with Meth. You know, that record debuted number one all around the world in every, in every country. Um, so, uh, you know, my gut was right, you know, and me and RZA just had the, the most incredible, we still have the most incredible relationship. Um, but, you know, he would come in every single day with a yellow pad and say, these are all the things I would like to get done. And I would say yes. And he goes, why are you saying yes to me? I said, because it makes sense. He goes, you're the first person that ever said yes to me. I said, well, to me, late you know, March, early, it had to be middle of March. Right after the album came out with them tonight. Where we went to a and I heard the album for the first time. I'm not gonna say I cried, but my eyes swelled up and I and I just had goosebumps. We got there at 8.30 after dinner. I didn't leave there until four o'clock in the morning. Just listening to the album. And I knew my life would be changed after November 9th. I knew RZA from being a DJ around the way. You know what I'm saying? I grew up with Meth and Ugard and Raekwon in the same hood, Park Hill Projects. Um, Ghost Rizzo was from Stapleton, that's like the next hood over. And Dirty and, and Jizza used to come from Brooklyn. Those Rizzo family members used to come from Brooklyn to Staten Island just to try to style on us, you know what I mean? Like, we Brooklyn, yo. The Staten Island can't rock with us, you know? But me, you, God, Math, Ray, we just, whatever, man. Brooklyn ain't, you know what I'm saying? Like, it became like a friendly competition with us to just meet up down Rizzo house and you know just make these tapes you know we used to be at RZA mom house beat up Mike on the terrace because she wouldn't let us in the house with all that cursing and all that going on so we used to be on the terrace like you know I right, passing the mic back and forth and everybody wasn't going to make it so RZA had to choose the best ones of everybody you know what I'm saying it was like Shaheem's too young but he was dope for a shorty so we gotta rock with Shaheem you know what I mean I remember just to get in there and just to get Riz's time for a beat was like hard because you had everybody in there. So being from Staten Island and being the underdog and, you know what I mean, being around, you know, great lyricists such as the RZA or Mav and, you know what I'm saying, GP Wu and, you know, the history and the richness of Staten Island and the 4SMD. So, but we still was always the outcast. So that confidence and that fire just came from wanting to yell like, yo, you gonna hear us. You got MCs that came out of Queens. You had about, Queens was the rulers of, uh, yeah, Run DMC, LL, Chew Tip, uh, uh, Mark D, Fitty, Nas, you know what I'm saying? A uh, 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 large professor, uh, uh, all those dudes that came out of Queens. You had a whole conglomerate come out of Queens. Bronx had Fat Joe and KRS and um, Cool Herc. They didn't birth the track then. You know what I'm saying? Then you had Manhattan. I don't know. But then, you know what I'm saying? Then you got Brooklyn. You got Big Daddy Kane. You had these. Oh, I even talk about MC Shaman on too. I forgot Queens and all that. But, you know what I'm saying? You had all that come out of Brooklyn. You had Kane. You had Bismarck. You had, you had um, um, Jay. You had Fab. You had all that. I have to stand now. But that nine came out of nowhere. We had to catch up. When I first heard Protect Your Neck, I knew that it was something different that nobody had ever heard. You know, I knew it would be a, I knew for anybody to hear that song for the first time, I knew it was, it was game changing. Now to the world or to the hip hop world, I don't know. But I don't know if you can remember the time where you heard certain classic songs like Lottie Dottie or you know just certain classics to show or you know sucker MCs like certain classics the first time you heard it you knew that it was gonna do something you know what I'm saying because of the impact that it had when it first hit you. When I was the 36 Chambers I was more or less locked up around that time you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I, I made it to like a couple of videos or whatever. I think like the Protect Your Neck video. But I didn't get a chance to make it to the studios or none of that. At that time, I was hustling real hard. Only thing I had enough time to do was to get in, in the Protect Your Neck video. I got a cameo in there with the with the Indian jacket on, busting the front door. You guys took me to the studio that one time. I was a security guard. He came to my job and he was like, yo, come to the studio, come to the studio. I went to the studio. RZA had, um, RZA was in there cooking up something new, you know what I'm saying? I went in there, heard it, Ray, Ray and Ghost had a verse on it, joking around, like, yo, let me hit, let me, let me get on, throw something on that. And he was like, 
yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, nah, I'm just fing it with you. You know what I mean? He was like, nah, nah. Do, 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 do this one, man. You know what I'm saying? Do this one for me. I was like, all right, boom, went over there a little five, ten minutes. Did my little ice cream verse. You know what I'm saying? Well, it wasn't even ice cream yet. It was just, it was, you know, we had the beat. The hook wasn't on it. You know what I'm saying? Meth came like 15 minutes, 20 minutes later. After I did my verse, he laid that hook on it. I was like, wow. I was like, yo, how you do that? Just imagine you see Deck come in and do his verse for Cream. You know what I'm saying? I was with Ray when he when he first wrote his verse for Cream. Matter of fact, he wrote two verses. He wrote one verse, it was crazy. And I was like, nah, Ray, say that one. And he said, I grew up on the crime side. You know, my favorite track is Cream course because Ray told just told my whole story and told everybody's story in the crew in one line him and Deck kind of like summed up our whole struggle in that one song he talking about a father mom's bounced on an old man it's the same shit. he was raised by one single parent you know what I mean it's like then he had, that gave you this, this how we grew up how we grew up so rough and back of the bus for of us jail and he you know what I mean he just took it through the whole that sums up, kid. That's why the record gonna last forever because it, 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 it touches not just it touches everybody. Everybody who lived that life can identify with at least one, two, or three words in that song. You know, we you know op opened up the doors. You know, and then when you know, I feel for everybody. And then, you know, and then Puff came. You know, it was like the door was open. But you know, the thing is, Hot 97. This is the crazy. Nobody knows this. Hot 97 was a dance station. They, they didn't play any hip hop. They just brought in Flex for um, to be a mixer, mm -hmm. you know, for Mixer Radio. And they did like a make it or break it. And the MBT, at first it was Protect Your Neck, but the record really didn't. But once MBT HOD, it went for eight days in a row, and the request was 10 to 1. Wu Tang, first of all, when we talk about their legacy, they forever changed the business of hip hop. They came in as a group, as a nine man group, and each one of them got solo deals separate solo deals like it, it wasn't done before we had nwa but nwa kind of had to break up for cube to go solo you know what i'm saying and, and dre to go solo and easy e like nwa was kind of already over um with Wu, they were still the wu-tang clan they can go off and do their own individual thing and then come back not only do they blow up as a group then they disperse as soloists and then but then when you do your, your homework and you look and see what's going on you see that you know, Method Man is on Def Jam, Old Dirty Bash is on Electra, Raekwon is on Loud Records. So these guys are kind of like infiltrating the industry and taking it by storm. So suddenly everybody has to have a crew. Everybody has to have a RZA type beat. Everybody's just jacking his beats. And you know, with RZA at the top, he's looking like a mastermind because nobody believed in these guys. Nobody did. That's why they had to do it themselves. RZA, wow. You heard the movie or the expression, Beautiful Mind? That's my brother, man. You know what I'm saying? Beautiful mind, intelligent, you know, great vision. When we came into the game, we, we stood on a principle. The principle was having knowledge of self. In other words, to be conscious of yourself and to be conscious of your environments. Total awareness. And we shared um, each other's knowledge. And, we, and we, we continued to build with each other daily. Uh, conversing and um, this is something that we've lacked over the years we, we still manage to you know our, our solidness we grounded but when it comes down to who we are but as far as coming off the ground after this 20 year um, empowerment we need to first come together back as the brotherhood Without that, there could be no legacy. I need for us to come together, put together this bomb ass Wu-Tang album, not from the 90s, to recap to the 90s, but to move forward. You know, I want the 2025 Wu-Tang album now, in, in 2013, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's when I feel like, when they, when they like this, oh, they did it again, you know what I'm saying? It, then I'd be happy, though. So I could be like, y'all can retire. And my name is like, you know, it's like your jersey and the Raptors in the building type thing. When they when they mention Wu-Tang, they're going to mention Inspector Day. They're going to mention 
us as being some of the illest MCs in hip hop, period. What's going on, everybody? It's the finisher, Mr. C, representing Hot 97 New York City and the Mighty Pitbulls. And on behalf of myself and the entire Hot 97 family, on behalf of hip hop, period, I want to congratulate the Wu Tang Clan. 20 years since the release of Enter the 36 Chambers. I mean, historic situation, historic album, many, many more accomplishments. I know y'all gonna keep going, going, doing what y'all do. RZA, Jizza, Method Man, Raekwon, Ghostface, Master Killer. You know what I mean? You God, Capadonna. Much love to y'all, and of course, RIP forever, ODB.